Good morning, everybody, again, and happy Easter to you. Uh, before we get started, I want to welcome in our family over at the South Campus and everybody watching online from wherever you're watching from. Come on, North Campus. Let's tell them how much we love them. We love you so much. Listen, if you are new to us and you are unfamiliar with this type of church or two campuses or a multi-campus, we just have, we're one church with just two campuses in order to reach as many people as possible, but you are our family and we love you very much. You are part of us. In fact, we just stream back and forth. Sometimes we're at South. Last week we were live at South and this week we just happen to be here live at North, but we are glad you are joining us today. We're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, my name is Stephen Warnock, and I'm the lead pastor here, and along with my wife, Tandra, we have the joy and the privilege of serving you guys every week. We love it so much. It's the honor of our life to do that. But I want to uh, show you something that you should have received in your chair or handed on your way in, and this is a response card, a survey card. And if you're new to us, uh, this is your guest card today. We would love for you to fill out your information on here. We'd love to know a little bit more about you. But I want every single person to fill one of these out today. And if you'll look on the back side, there's some information on there, some surveys on there that we would like to hear about from you. This helps us better serve you, maybe things you'd like to hear about. It can help us know where you are and, and how we can better teach you and equip you. Uh, so I want you guys to fill this out, and then at the very end, uh, there's an opportunity to talk about your next step, but you'll hear more about that at the end of this message today, and so hold off on that, and then on your way out, there are boxes at each campus, and you can just drop it in there, or there'll be some ushers in the lobby with buckets, and you can drop it in there too, but we would love for every single person to fill this out. This just helps us in a way that you don't understand until later this year when we're bringing you messages based on what you want to hear about, so... We're excited about that. Thank you guys so much for filling that out. We're also doing something else a little different today. Uh, we're going to have our founding pastor and our senior pastor, or former senior pastor, who is our director of outreach. Also, my father, Pastor Chuck Warnock, is going to bring a message to you. He was recently in Israel, and God showed him a number of things that he is excited to share with you guys. He's got a message burning inside of him. So could you take a minute and welcome our uh, founding pastor, Pastor Chuck Warnock. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good to be here. Amen. It's like our Super Bowl, right? So if you're new, I want to echo Pastor Stevens' welcome to be with us on each campus and online. And, you know, I don't know your spiritual history. And my history is I didn't grow up in church. So we, you know, we weren't, I don't even think we were Easter Christians. I mean, I don't remember hardly ever going to church. And I never knew what Easter was about. And, and uh, I think a lot of people today really don't know. You know, it's, it's cool if you want to dress up, you know, dressed up a little bit today. And it's, you know, do the eggs and bunnies and the dinners. And we got to, you know, those are great times to be with family, but... We know it's about the resurrection, but here's what I want to talk about today. Why is that important? Why is that a big deal? You know, why is it a big deal that Jesus rose from the dead? Why is it so important? Well, I'm going to give you a couple things from the Bible, and here's the first one. The Bible tells us that the resurrection of Jesus proves he is who he said he was. So, you know, we have a lot of religions today, a lot of religious leaders, and they all make claims. Jesus backed it up. In Romans 1.4, it says he is shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he is the only religious leader, only leader of a religion that has been raised from the dead. Think about that for just a minute. You know, a lot of people can claim things about themselves, but Jesus, was, it was proven by the resurrection from the dead. Um, he, didn't come to die, he didn't come, though, to, he didn't come to, be raised from the dead. He came to die. He came to die on the cross for our sins. Uh, and so the resurrection has something to do with that as well. Not only did the resurrection prove that Jesus is who he said he was, but the resurrection proves that our salvation is real. Now let me explain that. Jesus came to be an offering for our sin. I'm going to share a little bit in a minute some of the insights I got on our last trip to Israel of how, 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 just how powerful and, and real that is, the cross, okay? But that's why he came. He came to die on the cross, and the resurrection, this is something I hope I can get across to you today, proves God accepted his sacrifice on our behalf. 
So if you were an Israelite growing up, you know, if you were raised and you lived in Israel before the time of Christ, the way you went to church was you brought animals. And there was the shedding of blood. And every Jewish person knew that. In fact, other religions also have, ancient religions, uh, primitive religions have sacrifices, have animal sacrifices. So, so Jesus came to be that sacrifice. If you look in the Old Testament, you see all the rules for the sacrifice, and it had to be a lamb without blemish. Now, what's the resurrection have to do with that? If he had not been a perfect sacrifice, if he had not been without blemish, he would have had to die for his own sins. Not ours. That's kind of a legal issue. And a lot of people don't understand that God deals with legal issues. He is the judge of all the earth. And so there has to be a legal satisfaction for sin in the economy and justice system of God himself. And so if he had not risen from the dead, then it would have meant that he didn't die without sin. You know, there are people today that don't believe Jesus uh, lived without sin. That's, that's a fairly common belief. Oh, come on. He's just a human. Surely he's sinned. If he had, he would not have risen from the dead. Romans 4.25 says this. He was given over because of our transgressions and was raised for the sake of our justification. And so justification is a biblical word. It means just, justified, declared innocent. Now a Christian, someone who puts their faith in Jesus... The Bible says they're declared innocent. You know, God doesn't have, I don't know what your religious background is, but God has no probation. God has no partial forgiveness. It took me a while to, to get that. You know, you know, you ask God to forgive you and then you try to earn it. But he either forgives you or he doesn't. You carry guilt around thinking that's going to help. And it doesn't. It, al it, it almost says it's not enough what he did on the cross. That's the power of the cross. Now, when I went to Israel this year, Diane and I went early in February. We're planning to lead a tour next year in 2020. I know you're wanting details. I can't even get air flights, I found out, until July. So sometime this summer, we'll put the details together. But we'll probably go early next summer. If you're thinking about uh, going on a tour, we're going to lead a tour. It's going to be amazing. But one of the things I saw, I saw a couple of things. We, we were there 35 years ago, and I learned some new things on this trip. One of the things is they just uncovered something called... Uh, a Levitical, they think this is a, what they call a Levitical shepherd's field. In other words, they had all these shepherd's fields, and we know at the, the birth of Christ, the shepherds came. But now they've seen that there's this field that had much more watchtowers than most fields do. And uh, much more closely guarded. These were the sheep raised for the temple sacrifice. And the Levites, who were the priestly class, they were the shepherds over that field. And so these lambs had to be protected from any blemish or they could never have been sacrificed at the temple for the sins of the nation. And it could be that these were the shepherds literally that came the night Jesus was born. Think about it. The shepherds who raised the lambs that were to be sacrificed were the shepherds who saw the Lamb of God being born. And there's a valley between the Temple Mount and Israel uh, in the, the old city and then the Gethsemane. It's called the Kidron Valley. And I also didn't realize that there were like probably hundreds of thousands, maybe up to a million animals being sacrificed on Passover. That valley, that, that valley would have, it would have been literally flowing with blood. And Jesus would have seen that and his disciples as they crossed the valley to the Garden of Gethsemane the night he prayed. And the night he was betrayed. The understanding of the blood sacrifice was deeply embedded in the soul of every Jew and every Israelite. That's why Jesus came. The resurrection proves that that sacrifice was validated. God said, it is finished. It is enough. I've received your sacrifice. You have died not for your own sins, praise God, but for our sins. And he raised him from the dead. So... I'm calling this message today, Life Out of Death, okay? Because the, 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 not just his death, but our death. God calls people um, to be alive, but to be alive, you have to first die. There can be no 
resurrection without a death and a burial. Real Christianity, real Christianity is not just reformation, reform, turn over a new leaf, trying to be a better person. Real Christianity is, not li- is, is life out of death, not just good out of bad. If you think you're just trying to, you know, God just wants me to be better, you don't understand. I don't know about you, but I tried to be better before I met Jesus. I made stabs at it, you know. Resolutions, reformations, last for a while. What he's not asking me to do and not asking you and I to do is be better, but come and give him our lives. And that accomplishes something called a death so that he can accomplish something called a a resurrection. Romans 6, 4, therefore we are buried with him. I love this verse. Through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, notice this, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now I wonder, how many of you have have experienced that newness of life? Have you experienced that yet? Have you experienced something that is is nothing short of resurrection life? I've dealt with many skeptics uh, in my day. Uh, I know many, and I love talking to them about the proofs and the realities of our faith. Because there's a lot of proofs and realities behind them. But I've said what you saw in the Billy Graham video. Even if there were no proofs and no historical realities. We know there are hundreds of millions. Probably over a billion. Of true believers. Who will never deny the reality of God. No matter what duress they're under. Because they themselves have experienced this personal. Powerful. Supernatural resurrection so Jesus calls us to lose our lives look at this he said for whoever desires Matthew 16 25 whoever desires to save his life whoever desires to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it so a lot of people hesitate to give their lives to the Lord you know and I've had people well meaning is there any reason you won't pray this prayer oh I'll pray a prayer you know and a lot of people have prayed prayers but nothing happened. And, and, and they go, well, it didn't work. What he's after is not a prayer that we pray. He's after us giving him our lives. He can't change something that's not given to him. And so, I don't know, you know, when I was uh, under the conviction of the Holy Spirit as a college student, uh, I remember the week the Lord was after me. And I said, I, I kind of knew what was going on. And I, I remember thinking, I'm too young to die. I was 18. <laughs> For real, I was thinking that. Like, I'm running, and I'm thinking, I'm too young to die. And I, I nailed it. That's exactly what he was after. He was after me allowing the cross. To see, the cross is an instrument of death. He was after me allowing the cross to put to death the old nature. So that I could be buried in the waters of baptism. We have these every month we have these first Wednesday baptism services are so powerful we had 14 last month 20 the month before just people who are coming to Jesus and giving their lives to him so how do we know if this has happened you know because if you're just physically alive how many know you're really only half alive and and here's my burden I I feel the burden for people who are only half alive. I see it everywhere. You know, I see people who are not really alive. They're just kind of going through the motions. I remember that. I remember what that felt like. Feeling there was something more, but didn't know what it was. And that's what it is. You're only half alive. So how do you know? What is the evidence that you have in fact come to life in Christ, that you have been raised in newness of life. I want to give you a couple of biblical proofs of life here. There's some proofs of life. We we celebrate Jesus because we believe he's he's been proven that he raised from the dead. What's the proof we've been raised from the dead? Here's the first one. There is a there is a new law that we live by. You won't hear that a lot. Like, well, we're not under the law, we're under grace. Yeah, but grace does something in you where you live by a different set of rules. And it's not your set of rules anymore. You see, when I get saved, I gave up my right to set my own rules. It's not whether my rules are good or bad. Whether, are they my rules or are they God's rules? If I'm saying I live by my rules, I'm still God. 
But if I say I live by God's rules, then he's God. And I love what Romans 8, well, I'm in Romans a lot today. Romans 8, Paul wrote this in verse 3 and 4. By sending his son to be an offering for sin, God used a human life to destroy sin. He did this so that we could be the kind of people. This is what God's after. We could be the kind of people the law correctly wants us to be. Now, we do not live following our sinful selves, but we live following the Spirit. I don't know if you're, the Holy Spirit has come to empower us and make us new people. The same Spirit, we're told, that raised Jesus from the dead, praise God, now lives in us. Come on. The same Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead, the Bible says, lives in us and has given us this this newness of life. So the first evidence that you've been resurrected is that, that you're living now not for yourself. You may feel like, you may feel like you're, you're, you're failing at it, but you're, you're living for God, for real. Not because somebody pressures you to or somebody just asks you in a moment, but this is now the new law, if you will, that you live by. His word, his, his plan. A new relationship. Christianity is a relationship. It is, it is nothing if it is not that. It is a relationship. And we are, we are now, according to the Bible, alive to God. Before I was alive to sin and dead to God. I kind of had faint images of him and faint impressions. And occasionally he would visit me and call me to himself. But basically I was alive not to God but to other things. Now I'm alive to him. And he is the center relationship of my life. That's what it means to be a Christian. Now what is a relationship? Well, a relationship is presence. One of the greatest rewards of being a Christian is the presence of God. The, la- the actual presence of God. It is, it, is, it is wealth beyond measure. There's so many verses I could give you. Let me just give you this in Romans 14, 23. It says, all who love me will do what I say. I'm sorry, John 14, 23. All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we, look at this now, we will come and make our home with each of them. Have you ever had somebody really important come into your house? Get all nervous? Well, this is what God does. And he doesn't just visit. He lives inside of us. The, a Christian is never alone. Ever. Ever. Because God has made his home in us. That's what it means to have a relationship. This is not just a a figure of speech. This is not just some emotional state. This is real. The person of God living in us. Do you have that today? Do we have that? If you have that, you are wealth. You're you're wealthy beyond measure. There is no money that can buy that. It's been paid for with the blood of Jesus. When you're alive, you see. Jesus healed blind people. But he heals real blindness, which is not just physical blindness. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, when one is born again, until one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Do you know one of the greatest evidences of being saved is that you see spiritually. You, don't see, you used to not see things. Now you see. You know, you see people who are God's people. You see what God's up to. You see his, you see his work. You see his plan. You see, his, you see the evidence of God's working. I, you see the kingdom of God. You know, God's got a kingdom. God's a king, and he's got a bunch of people that serve him. And they're everywhere. But they're all like, when I don't know about you, when I was lost, they, they were invisible. I mean, I had one guy I knew in college that was a, that was a Christian, for real, because he was always witnessing to me. And I avoided him. He was just this <laughs> goody two-shoes medical student, you know, and, and uh, pre-med student. And I, I was like, He's real. But, but everybody, there was lots of them, but I didn't know who they were. And all of a sudden, I, was, I saw. I saw God's work in nature. I saw God's work in history. I saw God's work in the Bible. I, the Bible became alive. Amen? How many, how many can relate? I was like, this book, this book is no longer dead. God is, a, I'm aware of him. I'm aware of the devil. 
So I gave my heart to the Lord. The devil's been after you, me. Well, of course. He had you before. You know? Now he's, now he's after you. You're aware of things. You see things. Hearing is another evidence of life. Spiritual hearing. My sheep. A lot of people are not taught this. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. Do you know if you're saved, if you are one of God's sheep, he's your shepherd, and you should be hearing him. You should be hearing him speak to you. And, and you know, a lot of people come. I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for many years. They ask me for counsel. I love giving counsel. But a lot of times I like to say, well, what has God said? What is he saying to you? I don't know. Didn't ask him. People have prayer lives, but they never ask God to speak. They just kind of give him their list. Thank you. See you tomorrow. You know how it is. You ever talk to somebody like that? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> this special someone wants to have a conversation, but it's not really a conversation. The book, the book that our salvation is written down in. Did you know when you get saved, your name gets written down in a book? Did you know that? You know what it's called? You need to know this. The book of life. The book of life. The very book that your salvation is recorded in when you get saved is called the book of life. Let's look in Revelation 20. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books, now notice this, there's a bunch of books. Did you know everything's being written down? Well, Pastor, that just kind of makes me nervous. It ought to. <laughs> everything's being recorded. You know, we freak out now that they know everything we're saying on our phone and everything's on YouTube and Instagram. That's just, that's just a dim reflection of what's been going on since the moment you were born. When you and I go to heaven, there's going to be a supernatural YouTube he said every word you spoke, every idle word. It's been written down. There's libraries up there. For real. I'm not making this up. And he said the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which are written in the books. So it doesn't matter what other people think of you. It matters what God says. We all stand before God. By ourselves. Our friends won't be there. Our family won't be there. It's just us. Mano y mano. And our life it stands before him. And the books, they'll pull out your book. And then they'll pull out another book. And that's the name. You want your name in that book. Why? Because you go down. This is Revelation 20. A couple more verses. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's eternal, unimaginable suffering and judgment from God himself. So you and I, whatever else you decide to do or not do in life, you and I, each one of us need to be very sure that our name is written in this book. Now see, I've become aware that this isn't talked about very much. The book of life. How many agree with me? We don't talk about this. And, and that, how brain dead is that? To not talk about the book that we all need to make sure our name is written in. So I'm, I'm, I'm just determined I'm not going to be one of those guys that, don't, that doesn't talk about this. I'm gonna, in fact, next Sunday I'm going to get into this. I want us to know what this book's about. And the books, we're going to talk about that. So I hope you can come back. You're going to find it fascinating. Yes, a little sobering, but fascinating. So we, we hear God's voice. And... And he speaks to us as children. But I want, to, I want to tell you the very first time, no matter what age you are, the very first time, if you become a Christian, this is the very first time you're going to hear God speak to you. And that's found in John 5, 25. And this is talking about the resurrection. He says, and I assure you, the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now. Listen now. When the dead will hear the voice, the dead will hear my voice, the, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. Now, this is not talking about the physical resurrection because that has not happened yet. 
I don't know if you know that. It hasn't happened. A couple of verses down, you can read it for yourself in John 5. He talks about though people will come out of the grace. He said the time is coming. So that's a future time. But he says this time is here now. From the time he said this to, you know, around A.D. 30 till now, or 33, till now, the now time is God speaking. And I believe to each person. Now, I'm not one of those people. I've heard people say this, and I think it's kind of insulting to God. Well, God is speaking all the time. We just need to listen. Now, maybe you've heard that. Maybe you said that. I'm not here to get on to you. I'll just tell you you're wrong. Maybe. <laughs> I think you are. Because God is not some FM transmitter. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, got to tune in, tune in, tune in. Now, listen. God knows how to speak in a way you can hear him. And when he speaks, you'll know it. So, I don't think he's always speaking. But I think when he speaks, and he speaks a lot, I think we need to listen. And if you're away from God, there are times, multiple times, he will come and speak to you. I don't believe he's speaking all the time like a nagging grandmother. Please come to church. Please live for God. Please, 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 please. I don't believe God's doing that at all. But I believe there's, a, there's times. I remember the time he spoke to me. And I shudder to think what would have happened if I had blew, if I blew that off, if I had written that off. Because I'm 18. Come on, man. i got my whole life ahead of me. But I thank God that I listened and I just, yes, and I responded. And I gave my heart to the Lord. I don't, I personally don't believe he owed me another chance. He is good. He's long-suffering. But you can't bank on that. And so... When he speaks, this is the first time. See, when you're, if, you're, if you're not in a relationship, he's not telling you what to do. Now, you need to watch this. You need to go see this person. You need to deal with this issue. Let me show you how to. You know, he does all that when you're, when you're in a relationship. That's what relationships are. You know, people are, are not in relationships. They're not telling me anything because that's not, that's a, rela it's not a relationship. But when, that's when you get the relationship. But to start the relationship, there's this moment. When he comes to you and says, give your heart to me, that's the first thing he'll say to you. And that's the only thing he'll say to you until you do or don't do it. If you do it, then he begins the relationship. And what happens when you hear that voice? That voice is the same power that when he said, Lazarus, come forth, Lazarus got up out of the grave. That's resurrection power. It's embedded in the voice of God himself. You say, well, I know God's telling me to do this, but I don't know if I can. If he's telling you to do it, you can. That's right. That's right. Because in that voice is the power to do whatever he said. Not just to get saved, but everything after you're saved. Please know that. Whatever God says, if he's saying it, you can do it. Remember who you're dealing with. I am the resurrection and the life. So, we're dealing with someone who is none other than God himself. And I want to pray this morning that we all listen to God's voice. Amen? Amen. And hearken to it. And I want to ask you, if wherever you are, just to bow your heads, if you would, please. Just bow your heads for a minute. And Lord, I pray that all of us will, wherever we are in our relationship with you, will listen. And we celebrate this resurrected Jesus. And you've proven that if you... If you can conquer our worst enemy, you can conquer every other, other enemy. Uh, you can, our worst enemy is death, and you've conquered that. If you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus, I want you, if your head's bowed, to take great encouragement and comfort in the fact that you now have a shepherd who guides you, who watches out for you, who has already defeated every enemy that will ever come to you. If you're here today and you say, I don't know really, Pastor, where I am with God at each campus. I don't know where I am. But I do believe, Pastor, with my head bowed right now, that, I, that God is calling me to give my heart to Him. That I, I do hear His voice in my heart today. And I've prayed. We have prayed. We have, we have prayed fervently for this day that you 
who need to hear his voice will listen, will hearken, will pay attention, will respond. And I'm asking you to listen to the Lord's, to the voice of the Son of God right now. The only one who ever rose from the dead in all of history. The only religious leader who's ever done it. And if you're here and you say, Pastor, I believe that God is telling me. I am hearing his voice. And I know now that it's God telling me I need to give my heart to him. I want to just, no one look around. I want you to lift your hand. Because listen, if you're feeling any desire to do that, that's not the devil. Trust me. That's not the devil. That's not you. That's not your emotions. That's the living son of God. I want you to just hold your hand up. I want to pray for you right where you're sitting. I'm not going to ask you to come down or anything. But just lift your hand up. Pastor, I'm not where I need to be. But I believe God is speaking to me now to give my heart to him. Just right where you are. Just hold it up. All over the congregation. Just hold it up. Nothing to be ashamed. I want this for you. I understand where you are. I'm pumped about you getting what God has for you. Anybody else? Hold your hand up. Hold your hand up, please. I want to pray for you. Lord, I just see the hands. I believe there's a couple more. I'm just going to wait. Hold your hand up. Praise you. Praise you. Anybody else? Come on. There you go. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Father, we thank you for the lives that are saying, yes, I hear you, Lord. Yes. On both campuses, lift your hands. The Holy Spirit's working right now. God is speaking, and we're listening. Help them now to make that decision, that ultimate decision to give you their heart and soul. Would you just pray this prayer? Lord Jesus, I do believe in you, that you rose from the dead, that you are the Son of God, that you died for my sins. Come into my life. Make me a different person. Cleanse me by your precious blood. Both campuses. And I confess with my mouth believe in my heart that you are the son of God in Jesus name amen amen God bless you let's give these people a hand God bless you many hands many hands both campuses God bless you amen now you know what the Bible says there's a there's a bunch of stuff we want to get to you okay that's critical it's critical listen to me it's critical truth that will help you understand what happened and what needs to happen so, the way we can do this is this response card Pastor Stephen mentioned. At the, on, the, on the back of it, there's a, a number three, the next step. How many you know following Jesus means you're going somewhere? You're taking steps. You're not just sitting still. What's your next step? So, for many of you, you need to check that first box. Just check it off. Beginning my spiritual journey. That's a good, that's a good sounding word, isn't it? Beginning. Beginning my spiritual journey. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord and you need to say, I need to uh, be baptized. You know, I got baptized before I got saved. (laughs) That didn't work. (laughs) Because baptism was a burial. So you got to die before you're buried. So after I got saved, the Lord said, hey, Bubba, you need to get baptized again. And we didn't have nice warm baptisms like we, baptisms like we had. I did outside. So don't wait. He'll make you do it outside. <laughs> or you can come next uh, Wednesday at our South Campus. You can, you can uh, show up at 630. You can, you can email us in. You can turn this card in. We'll get the information to you. Other decisions there. Learning more about becoming a member. And life groups. We'll be starting our life groups this summer. So please take a minute. Indicate what is your next step. Would you do that? You see, you go, ah, Pastor, I don't know, I'm praying a prayer, but I'm not sure I'm ready. You know, that's cool, but listen, can I just say this, and I, I just owe you, I love you enough to tell you the truth. If you're not willing to write your name down somewhere on earth, I'm not sure we have confidence that our names will be written down in the book of life in heaven. Can I just be honest with you today? What would you think of me? It goes, man, I love my beautiful wife, but... I don't want anybody to know we're married. <laughs> You're like, you rascal, you don't deserve her. And you'd be right. Write your name down. Step up. Step up. Commit yourself. We do have a way, if you're not ready to do that today, and if you are, you can reinforce that, the A, B, C, D boxes on the card there. Uh, I'm already 
in a relationship. I'm beginning, like we talked about today. Some of you, just to be honest, you're not ready. You do, but you know, it, this can be very helpful to self-identify. C, I need a little more time to consider. D, I'm no plans. I'm just here because somebody made me come, you know. That's cool. It's good to know where you are. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask you to stand, if you would. And let's just uh, let's just pray one more time. Amen. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you for Jesus. Would you just thank him for Jesus right now? Thank him for the Son of God, the sacrifice for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for who you are, for the blood of Jesus. And from rising from the dead, if you are here today and you know you have risen from the dead, we just give him a great praise offering because God has given you the greatest miracle there ever could be. Lord, we bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Woo! Praise you, God. Thank you that we're alive in Christ forevermore. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys. You, our prayer team is coming to the front and our team is ready to pray with you about any and every need you would have and uh, we love you we hope to see you again if you're a guest because we're going to follow this up next week god bless you have a great day in the lord and happy easter